earlier today, Oklahoma City Thunder fans uh, got the worst possible news in relation to Chet Holmgren's injury. Of course, he sustained the injury early on in a Pro-Am game in Jamal Crawford's crossover league. Uh, it was confirmed today that he did suffer a Liz Frank injury and will miss the entire 2022-23 season, his rookie season. Chet was the number two overall pick. Um, the injury happened 30 seconds or so into the game. Um, and it's a bummer. It's a shame that, you know, one of the top picks in the draft and someone that, you know, fans were so excited to see on a team that so many people were excited to see goes down like this without ever playing, you know, a minute of, of meaningful NBA basketball. He had his unbelievable debut in the uh, Utah Summer League, I believe. But even in that first game, as he was looking great, he had an injury scare with his ankle. And this is something that has been a hot topic pretty much his entire season at Gonzaga leading up to the draft is he's seven foot one, he's 195 pounds, and is that body type going to be able to hold up to one, the grind of an NBA schedule, and two, the flat out size difference in opponents going from, you know, college students to NBA players like it's it's a tough thing and and I feel bad for for Chet because the memes have already started uh, so the injury happened on a on the first play of the game he went to defend LeBron James who was also playing along with like four or five other stars as well so this was like a, a star-studded NBA event in Seattle and uh, Chet gets hurt on the first play and Twitter immediately is like, dude, he guarded LeBron for 30 seconds and he's out for the year. They had the, you know, all the, the memes of KD in the hospital bed and like all the, all the different things. And, you know, that sucks because whether it, it was caused by that or not, I saw a lot of people arguing about what the actual cause of the injury was, which is one thing you can always count on Twitter for, uh, is, is that, that that knowledge, that, that Twitter user knowledge that only Twitter users seem to have. Um, saw a lot of people saying, you know, look how he planted his foot. It's because he planted his foot weird. It's not because he got bodied. It's not that. But, like, the fact of the matter is he got hurt on a pretty routine defensive play, and now his entire rookie season is going to be redshirted, basically. Uh, Sam Presti did a press conference Thursday where he did say that uh, they're going to be ultra conservative with bringing him back. They expect a full recovery. Um, the surgery has not been scheduled yet, but it will be uh, in the near future. And it's it's a shame. He did also say that it wasn't a fracture in his foot. He was very clear to specify that it was a torn tendon, which sounds equally bad, like <laughs> like broken broken bone, fractured bone, or torn tendon kind of all sound pretty bad and in in big men foot injuries are one of those things that you know that scares a team so i've seen some people say too that that'll be the end of of nba players in these pro-ams that's not gonna happen as as sad as it is to say this isn't like lebron james got hurt in a pro-am or Giannis got hurt in a pro-am or steph curry got hurt in a pro like if it was lebron got hurt on the first play of a pro pro-am adam silver would be on the phone with jamal crawford right now like hey you're gonna pay us back for all of the money we're gonna miss out on like with chet it's like yes it's a shame that we're not gonna get to see him but and the sad reality of it is is looking at it from a business standpoint the league isn't gonna the, the league is streaming pro-am games now with lebron appearing in them like they have them on the app with all the branding they did it with the drew league they did it with this game like it's become a commodity to the league so unless it, something happens that majorly derails one of the top tier players this is gonna just be like an inherent risk of of off season for players um I, so yeah, I don't think that's going to be something that they're going to do. I did have a few conflicting thoughts when it comes to the Thunder. Because they're one of those teams that could kind of go either way with all of this. So, Sam Presti has a treasure, tro treasure trove of draft picks left still. You know, everyone was really excited to see this team. To see Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Lou Dort, Pokashevsky, Josh Giddy, Chet Holmgren... 
all of these players that they've been, you know, they've been developing, they've been drafting, they've been they've been crafting this team around. It kind of like I don't want to say ruins it all, but like there's two ways the Thunder could play it. And one way is, you know, hey, we have the guys we like, Shea and Lou Dort and a few others are locked into long-term deals. We have our guys. We just tread water, see what we can do with what we have, maybe trade a little bit for someone to, you know, like this is the time we start to, you know, push towards being better. Chet will come back. We'll incorporate him, you know, when we can, you know, in a season or two. We'll see, you know, what we can what we can do. But for now, we can't tank anymore. We have these guys under contract. Let's make something happen. I don't think that's really likely, but you never know. Because Sam Presti is, is one of, if not the most patient GMs in the league. Like, the Thunder team is very patient with their strategies and their plans especially post uh, Durant leaving, the Westbrook trade, all of that. They have been, you know, willing to stick to the plan no matter what. So something tells me Chet Holmgren going down with an injury like this, where he's out for at least this next season, I wouldn't be shocked if the Thunder are going to start having those conversations like amongst themselves, like, hey, Victor Wembanyama, uh, 2023 draft, what do we think, guys? Do we trade Shea? Do we trade Lou, trade Lou Dort? Do we tank again? Do we try to run a lineup of Chet, Victor, and Poku? Do we just run the seven-foot triplets? Like, it wouldn't shock me because if there's one thing Sam Presti loves more than uh, rookies and young players on rookie deals, it's assets. That dude is uh, is a fiend for collecting assets. It's what Danny Ainge aspires to be, I think. So, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if the Thun if the Thunder decide to use this as like a all right. Well, you know what? We've tanked this long. We've stuck to the plan this long. What's one more year? And now we still have all the assets needed to go in and go get Victor Wembanyama. So they they've been really conservative with injuries to Shea, Dort, Josh Giddy, all these guys before. So if they decide, hey, we're gonna, you know what? I hate to say it, Shea Gilgis, Lou Dort, those other, uh, I guess, somewhat older players on the roster, uh, they're they're aging out of, of the window, would be the thought here. Like, hey, we don't have Chet for at least a year, Josh Giddy's still really young, Poku, who knows if we're going to get Victor Wembanyama or not. These two dudes are on their extensions already, it just doesn't fit anymore. And it could happen. And if that happens, Presti's going to be looking at that much more in terms of draft picks, assets, everything he loves to acquire. So it makes a lot of sense to me to think that this may be like a sign like, hey, this is it. It's time to it's time to pack it in once again and just go for Victor Wembanyama. Um, I don't know. It's way too early to tell. These are way too early reactions to all this. But all I do know is it's a shame that Chet's going to miss the whole season. It's a shame it had to happen on a play like that, where now it's going to become, you know, the story on him until he proves otherwise. And it's a bummer for all the all the fans that wanted to watch this team on League Pass. Like, just seeing the Josh Giddy-Chet Holmgren connection in Summer League was, like, really exciting. And the thought of adding in all of the other young talent that the Thunder have... That was going to be, like, probably one of the top three teams on my list to watch nightly on League Pass. Like, and I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking that. I'm sure everyone wanted to see what this team looked like because the youth and the excitement and the versatility was all there. So hopefully Chet is able to, you know, have a successful surgery, a full recovery, and, you know, no lingering issues related to this being a foot injury. And he can come back and he can continue to, you know, show that, that versatility and that dominance that made him the number two overall pick and the projected number one for a time there as well. Um, I really hope to see that because the Thunder are just one of those teams that I feel like I just enjoy watching, whether they're good or bad. But watching them, you know, watching that core go on a run just sounds like a lot of fun to me as an NBA fan, as a person who watches almost every game every night <laughs> like I was really excited to see that team so Thunder fans I'm very sorry to hear it 
Uh, please share your thoughts in the comments, whatever you're feeling, whatever you need to get out, what you want the team to do as far as like push forward and try to compete or maybe push back the rebuild to another year. See if you can tank and get Victor Von Doom. That's what I'm going to just call him. Um, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the day. Uh, be sure, like, subscribe, all that. I don't like saying it, but I'll say it. Like, subscribe, all that if you're new here. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a good day.